1049. Far from diminishing our concern to develop this earth, the expectancy of a new earth should spur us on, for it is here that the body of a new human family grows, foreshadowing in some way the age which is to come. That is why, although we must be careful to distinguish earthly progress clearly from the increase of the kingdom of Christ, such progress is of vital concern to the kingdom of God in so far as it can contribute to the better ordering of human society. 1050. When we have spread on earth the fruits of our nature and our enterprise, according to the command of the Lord and in His Spirit, we will find them once again cleansed this time from the stain of sin, illuminated and transfigured, when Christ presents to His Father an eternal and universal kingdom. God will then be all in all in eternal life. True, and subsistent life consists in this, the Father, through the Son and in the Holy Spirit, pouring out His heavenly gifts on all things without exception. Thanks to His mercy, we too, men that we are, have received the inalienable promise of eternal life. In brief, 1051, Every man receives his eternal recompense in his immortal soul from the moment of his death in a particular judgment by Christ, the judge of the living and the dead. 1052. We believe that the souls of all who die in Christ's grace are the people of God beyond death. On the day of resurrection, death will be definitively conquered when these souls will be reunited with their bodies. 1053. We believe that the multitude of those gathered around Jesus and Mary in paradise forms the church of heaven where in eternal blessedness they see God as he is and where they are also, to various degrees, associated with the holy angels in the divine governance exercised by Christ in glory, by interceding for us and helping our weakness by their fraternal concern.